So right now there are five checkpoint inhibitors that have been approved by the FDA for metastatic urothelial carcinoma. Two of which, atezolizumab and pembrolizumab, have, uh, have accelerated approval in patients who are platinum ineligible as first-line therapy. All of those drugs have uh, also approval for second-line therapy. The only one that has full approval is pembrolizumab. And that was based upon a randomized trial comparing pembrolizumab to uh, dealer's choice chemotherapy in patients for second-line bladder cancer. Dean Bajoran presented an update of that data today, and, and the survival difference is still consistent uh, with what we saw before. So uh, these are our approved agents for second-line therapy. Despite some of the durable responses that we see with checkpoint inhibition therapy, and in my clinical experience, we have some patients who have been responding for three years. Uh, unfortunately, only about a quarter of patients will respond to primary checkpoint treatment. So we're looking at newer treatments and techniques to either improve the outcomes of immune therapy or to add on to immune therapy. Uh, so one of the drugs I spoke about today is something called infortimab vedotin, which uh, otherwise known as uh, the 22, uh, 22CE antibody from agenesis. What this antibody does is it detects nectin and it delivers MMAE, which is an antitubulin agent, uh, to the bladder cancer cell. Nectin is expressed in nearly 90% of the specimens that we examined with metastatic urothelial carcinoma. In our phase one experience, we presented some very, very promising results today. Overall, the response rate's about 45%, with about 35% of patients who are checkpoint experienced uh, having a response to treatment. Additionally, we had a fairly high response rate in hepatic metastases. Even though the numbers are small, it's still about 30%. And that's actually very, very encouraging because this is an area that checkpoint inhibitors really don't cover. Uh, I mean, we see responses with visceral and liver disease, but it's actually less than the overall nodal patients. So I think it's a very, very exciting finding and combination studies as well as single agent trials are, are being designed. Now, uh, there's a lot of uh, dilemmas about the use of testing in patients who have uh, or are about to undergo checkpoint therapy uh, with uh, antibodies to PDL1. Right now, I don't routinely check PDL1 expression in patients because, as we see from all the five trials, there are PDL1 negative patients who will respond uh, to uh, checkpoint inhibition therapy. And I really would not want to deny somebody the chance of uh, a potentially prolonged durable response uh, based upon a test that does have a, a false negative rate. So I think it's important to uh, think about this in terms of clinical trials, and we certainly need to do better as far as the markers go, but I don't routinely put this in as part of clinical practice.